Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be taking a look at Kali Linux as well as a couple of websites that you might use to help you out. If you, I mean, Kali Linux is obviously a Linux distribution for penetration testing and security analysis. And so they just released a new version about four days ago or so. And uh, so I want to take a look at that. Some people have been asking me to do one on Kali Linux. And so here you go <laughs> right after this. So I want to take a look at, you know, my usual things that I look at when I uh, take a look at a new distro. Uh, and so let's, let's, let's first, I guess, let's explore what exactly is the history of Kali Linux. So in 2013, Kali Linux was initially released. Now, it has a pretty long history. It goes back to Backtrack, and I think it was called Wapix before that. Uh, both Wapix and Backtrack were based on Nopix Linux. But in 2013, the Offensive Security, which is the company that's behind Kali Linux, decided to port to Debian and in order to get onto a more modern operating system. And, you know, Nopix at the time was kind of having some problems, as you probably all remember, if you're old enough to remember. <laughs> in 2019, they decided to switch away from GNOME and go to XFCE as their primary desktop. And in 2020, they switched from Bash Shell to Z Shell. Now, both with GNOME and Z Shell, those are still available as install options or as options if you want to de deploy them. You can still do that. Uh, the current release of uh, Kali Linux was released February 24th, 2021. And uh, Kali Linux is a rolling release. So... It was developed by uh, Maddie Aroni and Devin Kearns of Offensive Security, and it was a rewrite of the latest version of the Nopix release, which was called Backtrack. It's based on the Debian testing branch, and so, yeah, it is going to be a rolling release, and uh, if you let your, uh, your, your repositories age too long, you may find that you'll be starting over and reinstalling Kali Linux because you can get the, it's just like Arch. I mean, if you get things so out of date that the dependencies aren't aren't matching up right for the install to in complete, for a upgrade to complete successfully, you could end up with an unbootable system. Now, have I ever had that happen? No, but I don't usually let my rolling releases get that out of date. Um, it is for penetration testing and, of course, security auditing as well. So what does it require to run? So you can run it without a desktop. You can run it headless if you want, and that'll take about 128 meg of RAM and about 2 gig of disk or so. But they recommend the desktop environment just makes things easier, lays out things a lot easier for you. Uh, and, and kind of has, you know, the tools arranged in areas that you can figure out pretty easily what they do. Uh, for the desktop environment, it takes 2 gig of RAM, of RAM minimum and uh, 20 gig of disk space. And we'll check that after we do the install today um, and to see that. So what else do you need? Well, you can install this on many different platforms. You can install it on x86, 64-bit and 32-bit. Yes, they still support 32-bit architectures. ARM, there's also a Apple M1, which I assume is a virtual machine. Uh, since I don't think the work is yet done on being able to actually run Linux native on the Apple M1 yet. I haven't tested that. It, you know, if you guys are interested in that, I might do that. It also runs on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, there's, it also supports virtual machines like VirtualBox, VMware. I'm going to be running it on Proxmox today, so... Uh, yeah, it, it also will work there as well. But you can also install it in a container. Uh, it supports both Docker and, L and LexD. So if you want to do that, you can install it as a container uh, version of the system. It will deploy to a cloud, and they, have, they support AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, and Linode. Uh, it also, there's a, I think it's called the NetHack version, which runs on Android phones. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. And you can also deploy it to a USB stick, although probably would have to be pretty beefy, about a 32 gig, I would imagine, in order to be able to actually do much with it. Uh, why did Offensive Security develop Kali Linux? So they just felt that there was a, a gap in the tool base in order to perform uh, advanced penetration testing and security auditing. 
and there wasn't very many tools around at the time and that would accomplish that and so they uh, started working and putting the system together now this goes all the way back to the Nopix days pulled that forward they updated the software and they've made it more current so uh, it continues to involve, evolve as the advanced persistent threats evolve as well so it's geared toward it should you use it I don't know it depends on on what your needs are if you're a professional pen tester or a security specialist you might consider Kali Linux as the right tool for your needs there are others of course uh, but it, because it is an advanced version of Linux, this probably isn't something you'd want to handle, hand over to someone who is new to Linux for the very first time and say, okay, here you go, uh, and good luck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think this would be something, I mean, you probably need about, again, like all advanced versions of Linux, eh, get a year under your belt first with one of the other versions of Linux first before you attempt this, at least understand how to how to install networking and how to how to get a Wi-Fi up and running that kind of thing that you're going to need for this and also what some of the permission values do some of the understand some of the areas of vulnerability and firewalls you might want to explore those as well before you start jumping into something like this uh, also, you, if you're going to use if you're going to attempt to use Kali Linux as your daily driver I wouldn't recommend it uh, they do not recommend installing out-of-band software and anything that isn't installed with their versions of the standard Linux system. They don't, they don't, offensive security does not really want, they try to discourage that. Uh, because the problem with it is, is that you're trying to use this tool to do an assessment on penetration testing. You do not want to be the one that's vulnerable in the network. So, yeah, I mean, first of all, you could, if you install the wrong packages, you could bring in... Uh, dependencies that may disrupt Kali and the and, and then create an inability for you to be able to launch the applications that are, are part of the Kali Linux suite. It isn't just a distro, it is a collection of tools as you will see. So the other thing, yeah, of course you could also expose your Kali system uh, to the uh, outside world and make it vulnerable which probably wouldn't be the best thing in the world for you. Uh, since the since a uh, potential attacker might use your machine to place attacks in your name, how nice of them! So yeah. <laughs> so how to get started on Kali Linux? So Offensive Security publishes a number of Kali Linux documents that are free. You can they're online. You can go read through them. They will step you through the process, what the tools do, how to get things installed and set up and secured. And then are also they also offer professional level classes if you're actually interested in certifying and becoming a, uh, a certified pen tester or a certified uh, security analyst. So you have those choices as well. Um, there are also a number of books, and I'll put some suggestions down below uh, of some of the books that I have used in the past with Kali Linux. It, and of course, you know, with publications that are in print, they run out of date pretty easily. And a lot of times the publishers don't, don't republish or create new versions of those, um, of those books that keep up with the latest. So it's, it, you can use it as a guide if you want, you know, to understand, you know, here's kind of the steps and so forth. Uh, something else that you might consider is that MITRE has created a uh, and a website called Attack and Check. And Attack and Check is a tool that was developed, I believe, by Lockheed Martin. And MITRE, of course, does a lot of work with governmental agencies. They also do things with the Department of Defense and also work in global areas of the global markets as well. So this particular website, we'll look at it and go through some of its capabilities, but it's really designed to show you the categorization of potential threats that, and of course, MITRE, they, they manage the CBE. And, and the CBE contains all the vulnerabilities, so they take, have taken that data and put it in a nice form that explains the potential areas of threat that you may encounter. And they update it. I don't know how often they do that, but it looks like it, they, they're, they're on a kind of a monthly schedule maybe to keep it updated with uh, the current threat environment that's out there and they have it nicely categorized for you to go through. Now, the categories are pretty similar to Cali. 
they're not exact. I mean, they're not one to one, but they're pretty similar to the way the Cali's, uh, the way Cali's uh, menu systems are set up. So, we can take a look at that as well, and uh, and that might be uh, a way for you to learn more. And of course, you can you can drill down into the various areas of the MITRE threat board, and then see what exactly the threat does, how it's how the vulnerability expose become you know manifests itself and becomes an exposure in your system. So, uh, yeah, we'll go through that. I'll also include a link to that website down below, and you can continue to explore that at your own leisure. So let's take a look at the install, and, uh, and then we'll take a look at the MITRE attack and check site as well. I'll be right back. So I suppose, as always, uh, the first place to start would be with the Cali website, and you'll find that at cali.org. You'll find some information here at the top where they have their blog posts about some of the things that are current or they're currently working on, or maybe there's some information here about what their new release does. Gives you a little bit of information. Uh, if they have partnerships that they are forming and what they're doing with them, so that's a good place to go if you're interested in keeping up on the latest news. And, of course, you can, if you want, turn this to dark if you don't like the bright website. Also, uh, there's also the download pages, which allows you to go to Cali NetHunter uh, or Cali Linux. There's documentation on both the actual distro itself and then on the individual tools as well. So... Yeah, you can, you can see the tools listing. It'll kind of go through all those tools with you. You can see what they do, what they require, and a kind of a usage for it as well. So that's kind of handy at, at once you become more familiar with the system. But for today, probably will not be starting there. Now, I have to tell you off the bat that I cannot, the, U, the YouTube terms of service do not permit me to, uh, to show how to hack and so that's not the purpose of this today the purpose of this today is to show you a, a potential tool and then let you decide if you want to use that one and then where you can go to get more information about how to use it so un unfortunately you you pretty much have to prove that you are a certified pen tester in order for youtube to allow you to create videos like that so i don't want to get crossways with them so that's not my purpose today. It's just to show you how to get this and get started in it. So the first thing, uh, the other thing is there's also a newsletter, community support, and all that stuff if you need that. And Offensive Security also offers a number of courses that you can get started. If you're new to Kali Linux, you can take a course in that. There's also introductions and more advanced courses all the way up to experienced users for pen testing and, and all of that. Uh, there's also information about for developments. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming a Kali developer or are contributing to their package base, you can get more information about that there. And then, of course, just some information about the Kali team in general. So let's start with the downloads, and we'll go to Kali Linux. And you'll see that uh, in the 2021.1 release, there is some release notes here that you can pull up. I'll explain the changes to you. I'm not going to go through those. You can do that on your own. But that for today, we'll get just the 64-bit installer. Now, there is a live version of this that you can just run without having to install it to a hard drive if you want. Uh, and also, as you can see, there's the M1. And then there are some ARM uh, installation. And I don't see any. They do have some vm downloads here for vmware and virtualbox and i think at the bottom here there was some other yeah read more on you can also customize an image as well i noticed that um on the raspberry pi page there's also a way to run you can set up kali linux to run headless and you can run through a script uh, that will modify the uh install file so the ISO image, if you will, uh, in order to be able to create it as headless and create an SSH uh, server that's up and running for you to be able to access the Raspberry Pi if you wish. So if you can go through that. It's, it's, it's in the community pages or in the documentation, I think. So anyway, for today, we're just going to get the installer. I've already downloaded that. But once you start it, it will just go ahead and start downloading. I'm just going to cancel that. I've already done it. 
And the next step for me would be to go over to Proxmox, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and create a VM. And I already have Kali installed, so I'm going to install it as Kali 2. And we'll put it to the NAS, and we'll look for the ISO file there. And there, there it is. I am going to be using Spice today, and this is fine. This works fine with Debian. Uh, I also want to put this on the local <laughs> hard drive. And I'll give it uh, my usual and 4096. Give it a little extra memory. Of course, won't need that. And, but I am going to run the Intel virtualized. Like I said before, I kind of like that one. So I'll go ahead and get this set up. I have not tried the installation on. Uh, I have not tried the installation on VirtualBox. So, okay. So it looks like we're good to go, and we'll go ahead and start that up. Go to the console. Okay. So we've got it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize this. Get this up just a little bit bigger for you. So we're going to do a graphical install. Let me register my mouse. And we'll start answering the questions as they come up here. Let me get that a little bigger. United States is where I'm at. American English is my keyboard standard, so just keep that. It's a, it's, it, Looks a little like a Debian install, not quite, a little, a little nicer perhaps. More modern, I guess is a better word. Goes through all its pre-checks. Okay. And we'll create a full name. All right, let's select our time zone. And we'll just set it up our usual way, push it all onto one partition, finish it, and we'll say write, yes, write the, write the changes to disk. All right, I'll be back. This will take a bit. <laughs> a lot to install. Okay, so we have our choices here as to what we want to do. Now, like I said, you can install GNOME if you want. I'm not going to, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Well, I'm going to leave the rest of it default if you want the full set, which is pretty large. I'm not, I don't think I created enough disks for that, but you can also install that if you want. Okay, we've finally gotten through all of the installs, so the next step is to get Grub installed on the boot track, and we'll do that. I'll go ahead and just specify the only drive in the system. <laughs> I don't think this will take too long. We'll just let it run through. So while we're sitting here, um, how, how often should you update Kali Linux? Should you update it daily? I wouldn't recommend that. The, um, the thing is about Kali Linux is it is based on the Debian testing repositories. That doesn't mean that the, that the system has been fully tested. That just means that's the re repos they use to perform testing. So you could you could run into some broken software. It's possible. Would I go two weeks out? Probably not. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna. Uh, I'll show you when we actually well. And once we get booted up into the system, we'll take a look at that and uh, and how many packages after four days are waiting to be installed here. So let's go ahead and sign in.
And the other thing I want to do is go ahead and set my get my settings for the display set. And I'll go, I guess, a full 19 by 1920 by 1080. I'll go ahead and apply that. Keep. Let's see. I think somewhere here. There we go. Full screen. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, um, first thing I'm going to do is drop to a command line here. We'll go ahead and get this a little bigger for you to see. And yeah, this is, this is that typical maddening. Why can't you expand the window after I change the number of lines? All right, so we'll do a sudo apt update. Remember, this is just four days. Yeah, there's a ton of repositories that are 143 packages in four days. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I, you probably, I wouldn't want to go any longer than a week, um, but I suppose ten days on the outside you could get away with. Uh, but it, but if you're gonna you're gonna blow this off for a couple of months and then come back and try to do an update, I wouldn't recommend that. I think that if you let it go that long, you'd probably be better off go picking up the distro again and reinstalling it uh, because the dependency maps are going to be all out of whack. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, now I haven't personally had that happen to me, but I, I have I have known people that have waited that long, they come back in, they do an update, and then Kelly doesn't boot. So, yeah. <laughs> You'll run into the same kind of problems with uh, Parrot as well, by the way. It's also one. Oops, I guess we have, I guess we have some, uh, let's see. Let me go fix this, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, all done, <laughs> updated and rebooted. Snort is just making me angry. It, yeah, I got to go fix some of my false flags in Snort. It's uh, it's driving me crazy. All right, so the first thing I guess we probably ought to do here, let's take a look at how much disk space this is taking. So 8.7 gig uh, is a, is currently in use. And then I don't know if HTOP, it's not installed. Now, I know they don't recommend that you do the out of band stuff, but I, I seriously doubt that LM sensors is going to cause a big problem for Kelly. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Looks like uh, it is still giving me a fit. Hang on. Yep, Snort got me again. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. About 401 meg uh, out of the three gig that's here. So a pretty typical XFCE install. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I can't show you the tools, I, you know, YouTube won't like that. So we don't want to make them angry. So anyway, I will show you the organization here. So you have, these are kind of steps that are suggested that you might want to follow if you are attempt, going to use this to maybe analyze your own home network or maybe some servers that you have exposed to the internet. So, uh, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to do this even on an internal site as well. Just make sure that whatever, whosever site you're going to do this with, you have permission to do so. Because at least, at, in most countries, you can go to jail for doing this. Information gathering would probably be the first step. You want to know, you know, what versions of the software you have on your systems. Uh, you want to know what what kind of what the map is and what the systems are that are laid out on your on your your system who which ones are at, at risk which ones may not be uh, and then you would probably do some invulnerability analysis to take a look at what levels of software installed and what known vulnerabilities are impacting those particular versions of the software they also have some some web application analysis here so if you have web apps that are up and running in the system you can actually go and check those out. And database, of course, you're looking for here, SQL injection. Up here, you're probably looking for things like cross-site uh, scripting and that kind of thing. Then you'll be looking for, did they did the did this particular, did, in your case, did you forget to change the default passwords on any of your appliances? Or do you have poor, uh, poor uh, poorly constructed passwords? Let's put it that way that might invite attack because these methods here can be used to guess passwords based on which ones are commonly used. There's also, there's also looking at wireless. You can do reverse engineering depending upon what kind of software it is you're trying to look at. Although, you know, in the open source world, that isn't as big a problem as there is it is in the 
close to this world. But again, be careful with this. Reverse engineering usually is a violation of the license agreement with the software company. Exploita exploitation tools, uh, once you kind of mapped out where you are, then yeah, then you might start to do to probe a little deeper into the system. Uh, and then, of course, you would be trying to um, either watch the traffic on the network or attempt to redirect people to your your plague site <laughs> to uh, attempt to extract additional information from them. Post uh, exploitation, where you're trying to see how far, how deep into the infrastructure you can get. Uh, forensics, what you can do to, you know, once an attack has occurred, what kind of steps can you take to try to identify what it was they did? Generally, in my experience, most companies don't you really bother with this. They usually just do a nuke and pave on the on. They might do it at least to find out what systems are effective, and then they just nuke and pave them over. Because if you leave one area open that the attacker has left as a back door, they'll be back. And so, yeah, a lot of times it's just easier to just reinstall and make sure this time, you could, after you read through the forensic tools, you know what to close down in the future. Reporting tools. Now, one thing I did notice on this version of Kali that Office tools are not installed. Typically, you, you don't do your reporting on the same system you're using for pen testing. You usually gather the data on the pen testing tool and then you would transfer it off to whatever systems that you were going to use to actually write up the report. So do I think that's a big deal? No, not really. And then social engineering and then uh, office sex link. So areas here where you can go to get additional information about potential vulnerabilities that maybe it found that maybe you don't quite understand what those do, but you're trying to understand further about what those particular vulnerabilities can uh, can open up in your infrastructure and and what risk those might have. So yeah, it's all about risk, right? It's all about risk. So I thought I thought for the next few minutes, we'll probably go over to MITRE uh, Attack and Check and take a look at what they have. So let me get set up and I'll be right back. So yeah, it's a nice bright white background, isn't it? So this is the, the uh, site that MITRE is maintaining. Uh, it was originally, like I said, developed by, uh, uh, by Lockheed Martin. And one of the things that it does down here is these are maintained, I think, uh, I don't know exactly how often they do this, but it looks to me like at least once a month they update this. And these are coming from known industry penetration. So these are things based on current events. So as similar to the way Cali is set up, you have recon and then you look at maybe resource development. You're trying to get your initial access, your foothold into the system as a pen tester. And then you're executing some things to find out additional information about these various areas, what persistent threats that you can exploit, whether or not you can get attain privilege ex escalation, which is of course becoming root or, or, or at least an administrator account that you have additional things that will allow you to do to the system. Defensive evasion, looking for tools that will obfuscate or try to cloak uh, their, their information to prevent you from accessing it. Credential access discovery, movement laterally across the infrastructure to see what other systems might be attached and vulnerable. Then start to collect and archive the data. Command and control, you're looking for, of course, what you can then do with the site. Exfiltration of data and the impact. So you can go, you can drill into any of these. So let's, let's say active scanning, there's 21 or two different techniques here. So pre-compromise mitigations. Uh, and you can click down on any of these and find out, like, here's the sub-technique. Scanning IP blocks. Let's look. Let's, let's go back. And the other one <clears throat> is vulnerability scanning or active scanning. So it'll, it'll. Yeah. And then you have you can you can drill into all of those areas and get more information about what it is they're actually talking about. And if you encounter that vulnerability when you're doing a Cali run, 
what's the impact? What's the risk to the system? I mean, what what is the what is and then maybe some suggested things that you can do to close the exploit and prevent that from being used to gain access into your system. So, yeah. So hopefully, I'll have a link to this in the show notes as well below in the description of the video. So if you are interested in taking a look at this, they do have. Um, yeah, they do have some information about how to get started, some training on this. Uh, there's some software if you're interested, and then there's the mitigations for both the enterprise and mobile. These are the techniques, of course, that we're looking at here, and then the tactics that would be used for based on whether enterprise or mobile. So you can use that as a kind of a guide. Uh, and I'm sure there are other sites, but I mean, I found this one a while ago, and it's it's. It's very, I, I mean, I trust MITRE. MITRE, this, MITRE has always been very good about, they're the ones that do the, uh, do the mitigations for Red Hat uh, and Red Hat releases, and they have always been very good as a tool. So I've never been afraid to use anything that they come up with. Anyway, um, that's, that's all I had for today. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any other information you'd like me to cover about Cali that I can. Uh, like, uh, let me know in the comments below if there's something that you would like me to, to do in the future on, on this topic. But hope this will get you started and give you some places to go to learn more. And if you want to become a professional security engineer or a, a security specialist or a pen tester, uh, there are links on both the offensive security site. I think there's even uh, some information on MITRE. Uh, they also have courses that they give. There are courses that are done by the government, too. Uh, if you are a government employee or a government contractor and are interested in going into thou those areas. so And I'm sure that even your corporations that you work for probably offer classes and sponsor classes in this field as well. I hope you enjoyed this today, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and as always, bye for now.